The Operation Wendy uh, is an enforcement operation uh, which is taking place in 10 countries of Francophone Africa. Uh, the aim is to dismantle uh, the ivory markets. In discussion with Interpol, we thought that it would be great to build capacity in those countries where the illicit ivory trade is important, where elephant poaching is important. Working at the source uh, of that ivory trade chain is working in remote areas where the elephants are. We have to be uh, on the ground, present with the enforcement authorities. We have to be there to see what they need and to meet their expectations with the real needs, not some needs we guess it will, it will help. Ueso is something between a disaster and a catastrophe in terms of uh, being a hub for wildlife trade. Ueso is a center for ivory trafficking and beyond ivory there's a lot of illegal bushmeat trade as well and there are stories that go back decades for how bad the situation is. Uh, the first day in Ueso we have been invited to uh, meet with the Two, two, two poachers uh, who have been uh, arrested uh, recently. But it was interesting because we also saw the tools they were using. Usually they have a military weapon or a hunting weapon, but they also have a saw to remove the tusk. And they also sometimes have a, a balance to weigh the tusk. So they they already know that more the task is heavy, more they will make profit of it. And now they are um, asked to answer some questions. Why they bought that uh, weapon, what they were expected to do with. So they are explaining that they had planned to kill elephants, but they didn't find elephants. The day after the interrogation, as part of the Operation Wendy, we went to the prison where all the poachers and traffickers uh, uh, were staying. So around 30 poachers have been arrested uh, in, uh, in Weso and around. And um, some of them were carrying ivory tusks when they have been arrested. And uh, we can see that uh, those tusks uh, weight between three and a half kilos. And uh, here this one is seven kilos. So we saw uh, seven uh, elephant tusks uh, in the interrogation room uh, representing at least four forest elephants killed. We followed those interrogations, we heard what they had to say, how they explained uh, why they went uh, to hunt for elephants. It, it, it was very interesting to hear that some of them um, had received the ammunition and the weapon from authorities and mainly enforcement authorities such as uh, the army, such as gendarmerie. So um, that's why uh, there is a, a very important work to do to fight corruption. In Congo, fighting wildlife trade, corruption is our biggest obstacle. We cannot close our eyes on that problem which needs to be tackled. When I say corruption is integral to ivory traffic, I really mean it all the way up to very high levels. So those very high levels, we haven't gotten prosecutions and this is our failure. So we really need to be working harder ourselves and I think that all NGOs need to be recognizing this as the main central problem with ivory traffic, for instance. Being on the ground, I have seen and have heard how soldiers, how um, high-ranked people either provide the weapons to poach or uh, 
give the funds or give the ammunition to get elephant tusks. And at this point, Congo and its other neighbor, Gabon, are big forests with a lot of biodiversity still sitting in those forests. And those are kind of like the last stand. Those forests are kind of the last stand for, for some of the bigger iconic species like forest elephants. The pressure has kind of come all around and now this block of forest, you know, millions and millions of hectares of good forest, good habitat, but the wildlife trafficking situation is just totally out of hand. In recent years, um, we've just seen just such a spike in the, in the, in the ivory trade with the, the economic changes happening in, in Asia, development also, um, it's, it's helping a lot of areas become less enclaved and now the development is happening at a speed that's sometimes faster than the speed of the development of justice. As I for, uh, as joined uh, Interpol for repressive action, I also decided to launch an uh, awareness campaign to inform the population uh, in Weso as well as in other cities uh, that it is forbidden uh, to hunt elephants. And as you can see, uh, we can read on that ad campaign that the elephants of Congo are not for sale. And the objective is to inform people that uh, first the ivory trade is illicit and uh, that the ivory trade kills elephants. We launched that campaign uh, in three different languages because in Congo, um, the French language is, is widely spoken, but we wanted also to use the d dialect, the Lingala, which is the national uh, langu Congolese language. But also, uh, there is more and more Asian communities living uh, in the country or working in the country, um, and many Chinese uh, nationals. So we thought that it would be a good idea to target them by spreading the message in their own language, so in Chinese. The approach of IFO uh, is a global one because we work in the source country, so we uh, support uh, the fight against poaching. We also work to support the, 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 the fight against traffickers. But we also need to change the trend in Asian countries and inform consumers of the impact of their choice. So we work at every level of that um, ivory trade chain and uh, that makes IFO different. What gives me hope is that it's possible to change everything that we see that's hurting biodiversity. It's totally possible. It's just a question of political will. We just need to see, uh, see the right players come together and make it happen. Change is possible. So basically when you have something that's that beautiful, it's definitely worth fighting for. Um, when we are on the ground and uh, we see all the challenges, we could feel very discouraged to continue because the road is still very long and uh, we know we don't have the time. However, you will always find people really motivated, really determined to work uh, for their own country, for their own wildlife. And our role is to support them, to, to encourage them because they are on the, on the right way. And uh, as an NGO, uh, even international, we will never be successful without those people on the ground at the source who share our, our view, our ideas about uh, um, protecting wildlife.